The crew has overshot a runway on the island of Bali, crashing into the sea. A number of people have been injured. No one was killed. Now to a country trying to emerge from two decades of utter chaos. Somalia, and it's just received a significant stamp of approval. It's being recognised by the International Monetary Fund, and that means the new government could receive technical support and policy advice, even as it continues to battle Islamist militants on its territory. Well, for more on this now, I'm joined from Nairobi by Andres Ilves, who is the editor of the BBC Somali service. And, uh, Andres, thanks for joining us. Let's start with a sense from you as to whether this really is a turning point, this really is a government that can govern the whole of Somalia? Well, probably what Somalia needs the most right now uh, is a series of stamps of recognition such as this one. It comes in a long series dating back for the past six months of recognition of the new government, which is the first government you could argue is a functioning and somewhat legitimate government that's been established on Somali soil. So it's been about six months now. The U.S. has recognized the new government, the EU, the African Union, the United Nations. So it comes in a series, and it's, it's a step. It's a step, a sign of the fact that finally there's a government in Somalia that the international community has confidence in that it at least has the possibility of, of rebuilding the country. Right. I, I guess a vote of confidence from the IMF would mean to most Somalis the opportunity of some funding to go with it. Under normal circumstances, yes, but in this case, uh, the IMF has made quite clear that uh, Somalia needs first, before there's any actual further assistance, it needs to pay back the sum $350 million that it owes. And of course, uh, that's quite a sum of money. Somalia is a government that just uh, approved a budget a couple of months ago of somewhat over $100 million. So if that's the annual operating budget of the country, it's going to be a long time before it could pay off that sum on its own. One might have thought then, Andres, given the, the uh, very fragile nature of Somalia over the years, that they would write that sort of figure off, because in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge amount of money, is it? No, it's not. And the thing is, actually, there's going to be a series of meetings. Uh, Somalia, I should add, also owes the World Bank $250 million. So in the interest of helping the country get back on its feet, one would imagine that Western donors are actually going to come together and uh, help pay this off so that Somalia can, in fact, move forward. Uh, uh, we're just looking at some of the pictures um, of Somalia at the moment. Talking about a government in control of the country, how much territory is it not in control of, would you say? Well, the we begin with the question of what constitutes Somalia, because tw some 20 years ago, a big piece of the country split off and declared itself as an independent country of Somali land, that although that hasn't been recognized by any other country in the world, has functioned as an independent state de facto for two decades now with its own currency and parliament and so on. And then you have autonomous regions that already are, are uh, well, somewhat autonomous, like Puntland, and you have areas that are still controlled by al-Shabaab. So Yes, to be frank, uh, the current federal government of Somalia does not control that much of the territory of, the, of what we would consider Somalia. Andres, thank you very much indeed.